Okay, I'm going to very carefully <laughs> just talk to one of them. Welcome back, guys, to the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Nuzlocke. I'm the Comic Foil. I'm the Green Scorpion, and here we have Madame Reina Ooh. with Roselia. I like the name Reina. Uh-huh. Um, so, fun fact about these two trainers right here, actually. Um, if anyone is, like, going through the postgame of uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and they have the Versus Seeker, these two trainers right here, uh, the elderly couple, are actually the best source of money in the game. Really? Yes. If you continuously use the Versus Seeker here and just, like, take them on, like, repeatedly, um, they actually will grant you a shit ton of money. Well, we are right by the Pokemon Mansion, so I guess they're the rich. Yeah, they're basically rich folk. Ah, poison Point. Yeah, I had a feeling that would happen. But I did it anyway. Ah, well, that, uh, Roselia's her only Pokemon, so there you go. It's also a really good spot to train, uh, to, like, Eevee and Ivy, or, like, Ivy train. No, Eevee. Eevee train. Because, like, you know what Pokemon they have. Yeah. So, yawn! Okay, so Mist user cloaks itself in White Mist, prevents any of their stats being lowered for five turns, or Haze. Uh, creates a Haze that eliminates every stat change. Um, I'm gonna go with Mist. Yeah, that's fine with me. Or rather, I'm going to get rid of Mist. Yeah. Yeah, Yawn is a... Se can be a semi-risky move? I think Yawn's a great move. Like, Yawn's a great move, but, like, it's... Here's the thing. The delay is a little annoying, but it is, like... Well, that's the thing about it, is, like, the reason it's good, at least in competitive, is because the trainer... The opposing trainer now knows, oh, nuts, if I don't swap out, they're going to fall asleep. So the whole idea is to make... Force them to make that, like, difficult decision. Do they... Do, like, do they yeah. make another move to try and take this Pokemon out and, uh, like, you know, risk them falling asleep? Or do I swap out and risk them reading my swap? Yeah. That kind of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Five. Uh, Confide is uh, lower special attack? Yeah, special attack. Oh. Yeah, so the whole idea, like, I actually kind of like a Confide. It's basically like, oh, hey, can I talk to you about something? I really need to, I, need, I really need some help with this thing. And, like, I don't know what to do, man. You and it's like, talk them down. Basically, and they're like, uh, and lower special attack because they're thinking too much. It's really hard after somebody does that to be like, gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, Remoraid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think they would ever do it, but I would love a Paldean form that gives us beta, remoraid, and artillery. That police officer should be a trainer as well. Okay. Both of these should be. Oh, no. Hi, right, hang in there, trainer. Uh, yeah, sure. But, yeah. Patrols day and night. I feel drowsy. I think police officers attack you at night. Oh, okay. Because they think you're an intruder, but during the day they can see you. Got you. Well, all right then. I'm on the tree, smear honey. Oh yeah, so the yeah, this whole thing, this whole area is 212. So yes, we have gotten our encounter here with Whooper. I'm just trying to remember what's up from here. Um, I believe it is Heart Home. Okay, back at Heart. So yeah, now we can go down that route and make our way back to um, Pastoria City if we wanted to. Okay. And yeah, if you want to go to the, uh, if, if you want to go to the, um, yeah, the Pokemon Center, heal up, and then we can hit the, uh, the. Uh, battle not, not the battle the pokemon mansion i have no idea what's in the pokemon mansion let me check actually okay uh skip ahead because i need to buy some potions anyway gotcha okay so there is reason to go to the pokemon mansion they're not there aren't any trainers there but there's the trophy garden which has wild pokemon in there oh so the so the trophy garden is a new location interesting so let's go in there because like there there normally actually is um, oh, okay, oh. so these guys are trainers. These Good. guys are trainers. Um, inside, there are maids you can battle, but I believe, if I'm reading this correctly, that's only in the case of Platinum. Okay. So we don't have to worry about that here. These guys, on the other hand... <laughs> yeah, this is the rich boy that I was talking about before, because I was like, I'm trying oh, to remember. Yeah. yeah, there's a rich... Th this is the rich boy with the Luxio. Yeah, because we could have come to this... We could have come to this route a lot earlier. See, I'm wondering about that, because I'm not so sure. 
yeah, I think we could have... Oh, no, it was blocked off. Yeah, blah, exactly. Blah, blah, blah. It was blocked off. Yeah, so it's like, what the heck, right? Yeah. But that that, that just... that That's a... Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know who made that design choice, but whatever. Who's to say? Um, going back to the oh yeah, because these are rich kids, yeah, they have like items it. that they can use. Um, real quick, by the way. Um, so that confide that uh, Chat Todd just did to us—that's yeah. something I've always liked about uh, Magic: The Gathering, where a lot of the blue spells like that help you win the game more are like you know. Help, like things that help you think in some way. Yeah, it's a lot about like cerebral kind of. Yeah, like um, uh, I forget, but uh, there's a couple that are like um, contemplate. Yeah, and... contemplate. Um, something about memory. One of my personal favorites is discombobulate. Yeah. Which is which is a three mana counter spell that allows you to counter like two different spells or something like that. Um, and uh, funny thing, actually, I've been watching a I've been watching a channel called the Manalogs which is a offshoot of the Duologues, who talks a lot about Yu-Gi-Oh, but he started the Manalogs ever since he got into Magic the Gathering, right? Yeah. And, like, it's really, really cool, the different, like, community terms that, like, the, uh, that the Magic the Gathering fan base has kind of come up with for, like, certain cards, like, cards that, uh, help you, um, find cards in your deck are called Tutors. Yeah. Uh, cards that help you generate mana are called Mana Dorks. Um... There's this one thing. Apparently, you know how you know those zero uh, mana artifacts that you can just place on the yeah. field. They're called eggs <laughs> because the zero looks like an egg. And uh, there are certain decks that revolve around um, uh, that re that re that revolve around um, those zero mana artifacts that are called uh, egg decks or bre or like breakfast decks. Breakfast decks. Yeah, like they, they apparently they have their names revolve around like different breakfast foods. There was this one strategy a while back with the card Second Sunrise and the deck was uh lovingly named Second Breakfast. I love it. <laughs> it's great. I love the terms that they come up with for um for the Magic the Gathering meta. It's really funny but also really entertaining. All right, so yeah, where are Yep, this is the way out to the trophy garden. The garden is open and for all visitors to enjoy. However, please be aware, uh, wild Pokemon may appear in the garden. Okay, well, wild Pokemon may appear here. Um, most of them are level 16 or level 18. There's a lot of them, but there's a couple in particular that might be of interest. Not this one. Not this one. Um, Doom's Claws. So, yeah, um, the ones that can appear here, a lot of them are... All of them are like 5% like uh, encounter chance, which basically just means, oh, like they all have equal chance of appearing. So it's just a matter of like rolling the dice here, right? Yeah. The Pokemon that can appear here, Clefairy, which we already got. Clefa, which we already have. Cast Form. Ugh. Okay. Not a good one I would want. Yeah, I would prefer not. Bonsly. That could be neat. That could be, that could be interesting. Mine Junior, we which already we already one. have. Happy Neat. Which we already have. Um, Azumarill and Meryl. Azumarill would not be too bad. I would love an Azumarill. So that's, a, that's one thought. Igglybuff and Jigglypuff. Are, are you sure this isn't like... Some of this isn't post-game or... Nope, this is, this is wild Pokemon in the Trophy Garden in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Interesting. Um, Plusle and Minin are of a particular interest, but we don't really want them. Meowth can appear here. So far, it's just Staravia's. Actually, yeah, hang on a sec. I, I, uh, I think there's something in this, because a lot of them aren't in the Sinnoh decks. You know what? No, I'm looking at the wrong thing. You're right. Um, so, yeah. Then what is... Then what is this random encounter list that I'm seeing here? Or is it just that these are the Pokemon that can appear with a 5% chance, but we have a higher chance of encountering these Pokemon, which are Staravia, Roselia, Krikatoon, Pichu, or Pikachu? That would be nice. So really, we're just gonna have to come through here and like hope for the best and get a dice roll. The there are two other Pokemon in the five percent clause or the five percent chance that are of particular interest. One of them is Porygon. Well, that'd be pretty crazy. The other one, however, is huge. Eevee. That would be great. I'm a little skeptical how if all of these are actually... It, it sounds too good to be true. I mean, it, it says right there, 5% for all of them, and then, like, there's the there's the area, and there's the higher chance encounters. You, you tell me, man. Yeah, I have no freaking clue. That's what the page says, I mean. Alright, 
Well done, buddy. How's he doing? Um, unfortunately, this Staravia got a uh, double team out. So we're missing a lot of attacks. I mean, as long as, uh, as long as we're not in danger of getting killed. Well, after this, we might be. Yeah, switch out. You should be able to switch to Barb. Electric types uh, resist uh, flying, don't they? I don't know if they resist it. Maybe they do. Um, I, I forget resistance. Again, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I get my resistance is confused. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, oh wait, you have Swift! I have Swift. I was gonna say, you have Swift! Yeah. Well, Alright then! <laughs> Thank you, Barb. Level 24, Monty. We also have two uh, rare candies waiting to use. Oh, okay, Monty. I see. There's the main area, and then there's, like, the daily Pokemon one or something? I have no clue. We may have to spend a little bit of time here until we get a new encounter. Yeah, um... Yeah, it says the main area, and then the daily encounter something, whatever. I have no freaking clue. Th th this, uh, th this isn't a very intuitive guide, if I may be honest. So, do you want to skip ahead and see if we find one, then, like, get back once we find something? Yeah. Yeah, because, like, this is just going to be us dealing with a bunch of Staravias. That's what it looks like. Okay, so we decided to explore the mansion a little bit, because I think there's somebody we can talk to. Yeah, so... Oh! Oh, cool. Okay, I, just find I, a random-ass burn heal. I just check... I always check the trash cans. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, there's, uh, there's the owner of the mansion, Mr. Backlot. Uh, who should be able to... Oh. A Soothe Bell! A soothe Bell, nice. Okay, so yeah, exploring this mansion is worth it anyway because of these items. So, there you go. Yeah, yeah, the owner of the mansion should be around here somewhere. Yeah, we got what do we got here? Great Ball. Cool. I mean, always good to have that. Looks like they're watching contests. I'm so sorry, everything beyond this point is secret and off-limits. Seems like a post-game thing. See, that's what I thought, too, but then I went there in the postgame and... Or maybe I forgot about it or something, but that just... Yeah. Mr. Ba Backlot is the master of this house. This is his office. Okay, so I think this guy might be able to tell us something. Hello, hello! Welcome to my opulent mansion. <clears throat> There's a lot for me to be proud of inside and outside of this home, but what makes me the most proud is my trophy garden in the back. Why bother traveling afar when Pokemon are attracted to my garden? They come to me. You're welcome to join them and marvel at my garden. Talk to him again. Uh, he doesn't say anything. Talk to the talk to the other guy. Yeah, I think this is like a butler. Master actually quite enjoys showing his prize garden to strong trainers. Okay. And you got. You may look, but please refrain from touching the po this Pokemon statue. I want to touch it now. I'm very sorry, but please refrain from touching the statue. <laughs> touch. Don't touch. Swagger! Okay, alright. Okay. Um, there's a book here. It's a very expensive looking book on Pokemon. Oh, alright. Uh. One more time. Yeah, Opulent Mansion. Go, go outside of the room and then back in. Okay, we can try that. Yeah, see, this is why these, like, freaking guides are BS. They're... The guides are really good if you already know most of it. Okay, I think maybe... Let's try a little bit more and see if we get lucky. If not, then we'll head back to Pastoria. Okay. Um... I was thinking of doing something kind of stupid. Go on. It's kind of stupid and kind of expensive. Go on. But I've been thinking about it for about an episode here. Um, what are you doing? Teaching Monty Ice Beam. Oh! Oh, Muldoon can learn Ice Beam, too. What? That's interesting. I thought you wanted him to be a physical. I know, I... My thought is just that it would help me fight Staravias now and... Fair get, enough. ...and get him trained faster. Okay, you know what? That's actually a, that's actually a worthwhile um, investment, so sure, let's do that. Okay. 
And do I have any good rock moves for Muldoon? Because Muldoon doesn't know any rock moves. I have. And you you might have. You might have access to Rock Tomb. Sad. Fly early, Toxic Sunny Day, Swagger, Rock Smash, which is a fighting type stealth move. Stealth Rock, Bullet Seed, Grass Knot, Taunt, Roost, Shockwave. It can learn Shockwave. What? Stealing, Payback, Flamethrower, Flamethrower. Uh, Sleep Talk. Thing. Yeah, it doesn't look like you have one. Okay. Huh. Weird. That's okay, because this is going to totally not be a Star Arabia. <laughs> oh my god, you were right! As soon as I spent the expensive TM on it. Oh goodness. Well, there you go. Okay, so we got a Pikachu, female. Alright. Um, it's low level, so you might be... Yawn it! Yep. Especially if it's gonna do that! So is Yawn gonna hit now that it... That's a good question. Yes, it does. Cool. <laughs> yeah, if you want to just go for... Yeah, do you want to go for Barb? Yeah. And uh, Swift it a couple times. Or, like, once. I'm actually... Like, I hope Swift doesn't knock it out. I doubt it will. I like how female Pikachu... Or if you want to use, like, a lightning move. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh... try a lightning move. Uh... Spark. Yeah, I can't get paralyzed, so I don't have to worry about the static. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Alright. Ultra Ball should do just fine here. Critical catch! Nice. Awesome! And I think I have a Thunderstone in my... Do you really? Yeah, from... From... Doing the underground for so long. Oh, goodness. It lives in force with others. It stores electricity and the electric sacks on its cheeks. Okay, give All me... Alright, so yeah, we have a Pikachu! Give me a minute to think of a good Pikachu name. So I know this one doesn't... I don't technically have, like, a connection to the Pikachu on this one. Yeah. Um, but it's just kind of a name I like and going with my uh, literary stuff. Um, so... Pikachu is going to be named Eponine, taking a character from Les Miserables. Ah, oh, okay. Just kind of a name you like? I was like, Pikachu, Eponine, like, I, I, it, it, it I like... can't explain the connection in my head. No, I get that. <laughs> um, but Eponine is um, the best friend and unrequited lover of uh, Marius. Yes. Um member of the revolution, daughter of the Tenardiers. All right. Are we going to use uh, Eponine? Don't know, but... I'm going to add her to my party for now, just for, like, the walk back, so that maybe she gets a few levels. Um, yeah, if you want. Um, Barb is pretty much at level 30 at this point, so... Yeah. Like, we're fine uh, with without her for a little bit. Do we want to look at the, her uh, whole deal? She's got an item on her. Oh. Huh? Oops, that's the bag. No way. Is that what I think it is? She's got the light ball! She has the light ball. Let's check the summary here. Holy! An item to be held by Pikachu. It's a puzzling orb that boosts its attack and special attack stats. Alright. We got a freak... Dude, that's lucky as hell! Uh, we got Electro Ball, Thunder Wave, Double Team, Faint. Uh-huh. Thunder Wave is always good. Uh, that's its, uh, contest stats. It is... Static, of course. Static. Up attack minus special defense. So it's a physical Pikachu. Interesting. Pikachu can be physical, right? I mean... Uh? There exist moves. We could, like, try and teach it, like... Iron Tail? Yeah. Yeah, apparently Pikachu can learn Iron Tail. Yeah. Um, that being said, um, yeah, now that we know it has a light ball, do we want to keep it as a Pikachu for now? I know that's not yeah. exactly. I know that's not exactly like you know the viable strategy, mind you. But light ball is kind of an amazing item on Pikachu. You know what? Um, let's consult the team on this. Hey, guys in the comments, let me yeah. know. Um, would it be better to evolve it into a Raichu or keep it as Pikachu with the light ball? Yeah, because that that honestly, I, like, I don't the, know the numbers for that one. Neither do I, frankly. But like, yeah, the whole light ball thing is actually kind of significant. That is a very very like, lucky situation that we just ran into. 
So cool! We have a, we have a Pikachu with Light Ball! Yeah, awesome. That's great! That makes me feel good. Um, okay, I think... I guess now we just need to, like, make the trek back and then start our way through Pastoria City Gym. Yeah, basically. Um, what we could probably do to end off the episode is we can, like, uh, basically just do all the trainers, and then we can open up with Crash or Wake in the next episode. Yeah, And then we can great. start making our way to the next, uh, to the next destination. Okay. Oh, I think we have another trainer hiding up here. And an item. Uh, yeah, we want to do this real quick, and then we can just... Money. And yeah. then we can just, uh, head back to the city. Um, oh, are you not a trainer? Oh, no, he was just uh, facing the wrong okay. way. Couldn't really see him. Alright, so what do we got here? Another scientist, Sean. This Abra. So here's a question for you. I have an answer for you. Um, Does this Abra have energy ball? It might, so I'm gonna switch. Uh, yeah. Chloe! Yeah, let's go with Chloe. Mm -hmm. Um, Abra, psychic type. Yes. Favorite psychic type specialist. Oh yeah, we're going back to this, aren't we? Yep. Um, I brought, I'm bringing it back. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I completely forgot about that. There's the energy. There ball that we go. Have, that's why we do this, would baby. Would have screwed us. Mm -hmm. Would have been four times see that, see that? See, that's why knowing move sets is important. People. Yeah. Um, favorite psychic type specialist. Uh, hmm. You got Sabrina. Which I always go back to when it comes to psychic type specialists. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, Sabrina's just cool. I um, might go with Sabrina. I gotta, like, see if I can convince myself otherwise here. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of others. Like, another one that I can think of that is, like, really cool, but at the same time doesn't really hold a candle to Sabrina is Lucian. Yeah. Yeah, I like Lucian. Yeah, because, like, there are other, um, psychic-type trainers that don't really... Eh? Like, Tate and Liza is cool, but... Yeah. Once you, yeah. Know, once you know their whole thing, they don't really, like, appeal to, appeal to me as much. Um, There's who Olympia. Else? Yeah, Olympia, who is... I don't know. Olympia is just a little too muchery for me. Yeah, and then I, there... I was never really into that whole yeah. design. That's same, just... same thing here, because, like, in this... No, 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 she's a... Fantina's the ghost trainer. With Olympia... Now, granted, I didn't watch that part of, like, the XY anime, so uh, maybe I'm missing something, but, like, Olympia is always, like... Like, you you don't feel like a real person. Like, what do you do outside yeah. of outside of this whole thing which is like you know that that's ironic considering that we also chose like a, a, a sabrina i oh, will nice. one, i will 100 percent admit this is coming from a place of nostalgia because i did watch that anime and sabrina was terrifying here's the thing about it though it has been established in the pokemon universe not just in the anime but also in this in, in the actual games that psychic people exist in the pokemon world. yeah so it's not out of the question to believe oh hey like, in a world with these fantastical creatures with psychic powers and, like, you know, uh, divine, like, uh, abilities, it's not entirely out of the question to, to, like, for a person to be able to utilize psychic powers every now and again, you know? So yeah. I can totally believe Sabrina can exist in this world. Sorry, I was looking at something on my phone for a second. Oh, her name was Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's just funny. It's like Sabrina knows. Yeah, I think she, like, inhabited that person to listen in. Oh, Bottle Zinc. Cool. Um, yeah, I, honestly, I can't really think of anyone else other than Sabrina. There's Faba from Gen 7. Okay, question. Yeah. Would Beide count? Because Beide, all of his Pokemon are both fairy and psychic. Type. Yeah, Beide is interesting because, like, he starts out as a psychic specialist, but then kind of, like, branches into fairy type after... By the way, go back, go back. Uh, go past those, uh, Brary Trees. Oh, I see. And there. That's Five! Good. Okay, money. money! Um, I guess Beta kinda counts, but at the same time, not really, because again, like, he does specialize in Psychics, and then he takes over the Fairy Gym after he, uh, after Opal trains him. Are any of, I have to I would have to look at his team again because I don't quite remember. But are any of his Pokemon not psychic type? I'm actually gonna look this up while you're going to the while you're going to the Pokemon Center because I'm curious now. All right, hold tight, guys. Okay, so while you're doing this, um, yeah, it's your hmm. This is interesting. Beide is the one example of a trainer who starts out as a specialist of one type but then changes to another, because the last time you fight him before Opal takes him under her wing. 
His team is Duosion, Gotharita, Ponyta, Galarian, which is like also a psychic type, and Hatrine. Wait, what's the one you said? Or Hatrine? Uh, Ponyta. Ponyta. Galarian Ponyta. Oh, okay. Who's also a psychic. Psychic fairy, right? But then, after that, and after, like, you know, he takes over uh, as the uh, fairy type uh, gym leader, his entire team is fairy type. The last time you fight him in the Pokemon League, Mawile, Gardevoir, R Galarian, Rapidash, Sylveon, and Hatrine. Okay. So, yeah, he changes entirely to fairy type. He no longer has, uh, he doesn't use Reuniclus, he doesn't use Gothitelle. So, yeah, I guess he's a fairy and a psychic specialist. Or Psychic Specialist Turn Fairy. So oh, that's interesting. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. Bayday is criminally underutilized in in Generation... Yeah, that's... In, in Generation 8. That's a case of something that, like, seemed kind of interesting to me and I didn't feel like it was really delivered on. Yeah, th honestly, that's kind of Generation 8 in a nutshell, if you ask me. Because, yeah. like, Marnie has a lot of really cool things about her, but they don't utilize her enough. Bayday has a lot of cool, interesting things about him, but they don't utilize him enough. And Hop doesn't have a lot of interesting things about him but they don't utilize him enough yeah which again is the same thing with leon it's the same thing with uh with the uh, chairman rose there, there's a lot of interesting things in generation eight that they just do not utilize and i remember the gimmick of this gym and this is gonna be annoying uh good old water raising oh course. my god the gym leader wake uh i mean crasher wake is a master of water type pokemon I'd say you've got guts if you try to face down water types with fire or ground type Pokemon. But that part but that part I'll leave up to you. Go and have some good battles. Okay, so who do you have up front right now? Uh uh Monty Quagsire. Oh, uh, okay, so you're gonna basically just train him up? Yep. Um I did think actually of another one who I think might actually be my choice for psychic. Oh, go ahead. Um Caitlin who is the Elite Four member in oh, Unova. yeah! She's got uh, Musharna, she's got uh, Reuniclus, and Gothitelle, um, and what's her other one? Sigilith? I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, is, that's true! I completely forgot about Caitlyn. Yeah, when you're Nuzlocking, is kind of like a uh -huh. pretty tricky team to deal with. Yeah, that is true. And... What I like about her is that, like, fun fact, we had seen her before Gen 5 because her butler was a member of the Battle Frontier in mm. Gen 4. Yeah. Which I, I just thought his thought was kind of neat. So, yeah, not not that there's a lot to go off, but I'm going to go with Caitlyn. All right. Yeah, again, I usually, um, I I'm going to go with Nostalgia here and just go with Sabrina. I don't blame you. Because, like, Sabri Sabrina's just cool. Yeah. Like, if you ask me. Okay, I don't appreciate that he has moves that can make us flinch. So yeah, this is going to take a little bit of work, but we should be fine. Um, the next trainer you're going to deal with has a Barboach, so keep that in mind. Okay. Um, what other types can we talk about here? Well, speaking of Barboach, how about ground types? Uh, hmm. Last time you mentioned clay. Yeah, I, I was probably going to say clay. Clay's just kind of has that really cool coolness factor about him he's like he, he's like that seasoned veteran type of uh trainer he does definitely take a lot of charge of the scenario that he's in oh no you got to keep it down so go back to that other oh. button yeah oh i gotta go down there yep um yeah Clay, like um if i recall correctly clay's like the first trainer in generation five that actually is like no uh whatever this uh Despot Getsis is saying, no, screw that. Like, whatever he's saying is kind of bupkis. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite ground gym leader or specialist, I, I do like... I do like Bertha, who's in this one. Yeah, Bertha's actually a... Bertha's a deceptively dangerous trainer. Yeah. I like... I love the, like, old ladies that are actually really strong in see, Pokemon. See, like, that that's what I want to see for Generation 9. I really, really want to see an Abuelita. <laughs> yeah. in somewhere in Generation 9, I want to see an Abuelita trainer. Make her a gym leader. Make her an Elite Four member. Heck, have the Abuelita be the champion. Because we've had a lot of... There are a lot of, like, crazy powerful old ladies, like Agatha and uh -huh. Opal and... Um, but uh, Glacia. Yeah, Glacia. 
but my favorite ground type specialist is from Gen 7, and it's uh, Hapu. Oh, yeah. I just think she's kind of cool. I like how she shows up all the time, and she's all mysterious, and she's got her Mudsdale. Yeah, I do like that one. Uh, ge Generation uh, 7? Yeah, Generation yep. 7 had a lot of really colorful characters, which I think worked to its benefit, which they definitely followed up in Generation 8, let's be honest. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I I'm gonna stick with Clay, because I think Clay has a lot of really good, like, authority and just, like, overall just coolness factor to him. So, I'm gonna go with that. Does Clay beat out Giovanni for you? Because Giovanni is also a ground-type specialist. You know what? It's so easy to forget that. And now I'm just gonna say Giovanni, because holy crap. Because the thing is, is, like, Giovanni is kind of like, kind of like Bede in that he fits two, like, two aspects. Sometimes he's a gym leader, and, like, he specializes in ground-types, but then there are other times he doesn't use anything but ground types. Like, he's used Persian. Yeah. He's used Honchcrow, which is just super fitting. He's used Mewtwo. I mean, you could say you like him more as a character, but not as much as a ground type specialist. Yeah, because like, I guess the whole ground type specialist thing is kind of like, oh, yeah, he, here's this criminal of, like, Team Rocket, one of the most prestigious criminal organizations in, in Kanto, and he specializes in ground type Pokemon, interestingly enough? Yep. Which is like all, which was all, I guess because Dark type just didn't exist at the time. <laughs> and he wants to rule the earth? That, that's what I thought, but it, like, no. A as a ground type trainer, I probably like Clay more. As a character, though, I definitely like Giovanni more. In um, Pokemon Puzzle League. Yeah. Because, you know, Giovanni gives you the earth badge. That's uh -huh. his badge. Um, one of the quotes Giovanni yells a lot is he goes, The earth will be mine! And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay yeah. Ground. I, like, if you want to make some sort of connection, like, there you go. And, uh, actually, yeah, now that I think about it, like, it, those aren't the only Pokemon that, that aren't ground type of his either. Like, if I recall correctly, in Generation 1, he used Kangaskhan. Yeah. He's, he's like a Kaiju trainer. Kind of! Like, I imagine if he were... He gets all the Kaijumon. Yeah, like, I imagine if he were in, like, if you were to fight him now, he would probably utilize the likes of, like, Colossal. Or, like... Duraludon. Or Duraludon. I'm surprised. Has he ever used Tyranitar? Um, I mean, probably in, like, in the like, larger franchise. Like, maybe in, like, Pokemon World Champion or something. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. But, yeah, yeah, like, I can totally see, like, Giovanni, like, using Tyranitar. Because, yeah, he's kind of, like... Yeah, now that you mention it, he is the Kaiju Specialist, isn't it? Aside from, like, Persian and, uh, Tonchkrow, obviously. He used the Nido family. He's used Rhyperior. He's used, um... The Kangas Khan. He's used... The, yeah, he's used a trio. Yep. Which, I guess, is kind of a Kaiju? Just underground? Oh, we're, we were talking about Kaiju. Sorry, I was thinking about ground types. Oh, yeah, no, like... Yeah, no, I'm talking Kaijus, which is why I was like, I'm gonna say Kangas Khan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, yeah, you could totally see him using Tyranitar. Or, um... Oh, man... Giovanni using Tyrantrum. Yeah, I would love to see Giovanni back. I would have loved to see him in a Gen 8 game using Dynamax. Yeah, like, that that's kind of like the bigger connection I have with him is that he uses these larger-than-life Pokemon uh, that also have that, like, imposing connection to... You know he would use Groudon. He's if, also... he, if he can get his hands on Groudon, he would use Groudon. He's one of the only trainers in a mainline game to ever use me too. Um, you don't really have a... That's up to you. Well, what were you thinking? Um, what does Spark do? Uh, Spark is a physical move, 65. Oh, okay. Chance Actually, paralysis. yeah, then yeah, go ahead and replace Faint. Because at the very least, this way, like, we have Electro Ball if we have a physical, if we have to do, deal with yeah. a physical threat, and, like, uh, Spark, we have a special threat. Oh, speaking of Caitlyn. Another Caitlyn. <laughs> what are the odds of two people being named Caitlyn? An incredibly common name. Fun um, fact, if I was born a girl, that's what my parents wanted to name me. Really? Yep. Huh. I don't think my parents ever expressed to me what they would have named me if I were if I were a girl. Olivia, maybe? I don't know. Alright, so we got a Goldeen. We're, we're basically just like crashing through here. <laughs> <laughs> we're crashing through week. Yep. Um I guess, um, here's an interesting one for you, since you've been using this move a lot. Normal Specialist. This is really tough. Oh, that's really tough, actually. Yeah, there, there's not a lot of them, 
and when they and when they do appear, they stand out. There's more, like there's and, more than it seems like there is. Like pe people immediately go to what's her face, Whitney, um, Whitney from Generation Two, but that's also because they fear her like the, <laughs> like like she's like the spawn of Satan. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> that gosh darn milk tank man. Um, I have three contenders. I don't usually. I'm not usually stuck between three for these questions. Yeah, interesting with normal, isn't it? Um, what do you got? Um, I gotta switch out because it's a Gyarados. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, did you go to Barb. Yeah, Barb can handle this. Um. Okay, so. Some of the big contenders. I'm nervous. It's a, okay, alright, alright. Nah, you should be fine. You should be fine. Can we outspeed? You should be able to outspeed a Gyarados at level 24. Yeah. Okay. Um. Then I could probably outspeed. Oh, nuts! Oh, man. Substitute? Substitute? Get out of here! Yeah, just go with a Swift! Yeah, just go with a swift, get the guaranteed kill. What are you trying to use substitute for? Weirdo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was an interesting choice. I didn't even know Gyarados could know substitute. I didn't know either. Um. Okay, we still got another Pokemon here. Barboach. Alright, then we're switching now. Yep, sounds good. Still, that was good, that was good. Jack, long time no see. Uh, yeah, do you want to go with Jack? Yep. Let's do it. Um, so you got Norman. Yeah. Is a big one. Yeah, that that was my thought, was Norman. That, that was always a cool moment of, like... Oh, your dad's the, uh, yeah. like, the last gym leader. And so that whole idea in Generation 3 is, like, oh, you have to circle back to your hometown and the last, uh, the last, um, obstacle between you and the Pokemon League is... Your dad. Well, he's not the last. He's the fifth. Oh, he's the fifth. But but you do meet him near the end. Yeah, he's the first gym leader you meet. Yeah. And then you had to go around and beat four other gym leaders before him. Yeah, that that was a really cool like way to do that whole like you know father uh, yeah. son or father kid um like Pokemon dynamic type of thing. Um, another is Ilima because I just really like his design. Uh huh. Um, but I think my favorite actually is Charon because he's your rival in black and white and then in black and white too he's the normal type gym leader oh yeah that's true with his stoutland I believe that takes you back <laughs> yeah that's a red herring right there why are you <laughs> So yeah, if you go down there, you'll lower it, and then you can go over north and head down. Makes sense. Yep, there you go. Okay. Yep. Stuck on a wall. Stuck on a wall, and you're to blame. You keep going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> you're dumb puzzle slowing down the game. You keep going the wrong way. You keep going the wrong way. <laughs> there should be a sound type. Yeah. Like, we've got enough Pokemon that, like, utilize sound as their whole gimmick. Like, a Sonic type would be really cool, Yeah. There, quite frankly. There is kind of, like, an unofficial sound type, because, like, some Pokemon have resistances or strengths with sound type mo sound like moves yeah um oh what was it like boom um, burst uh boom burst is like a signature move that that was like neuvern's whole thing right yeah neuvern had that um explode also that's true that's true and like there are some um there are some abilities that revolve around sound based moves like uh cacophony yeah 
Uh, but how about you for a normal type trainer? Um, honestly, I'm probably gonna go with Norman. I like the whole dynamic in Generation 3, where, like, he's basically one of the obstacles that the trainer has to overcome before heading into the Elite, or before heading into the end game. Yeah. Like, I, I like that idea that they utilize with Norman. So, I'm, I'd probably go with Norman. And I do admittedly like, um, I, I do admittedly like Whitney, if only ironically, because, good lord, she cemented herself into Pokemon I, I, uh, in I Pokemon mean, she's fandom. memorable, yeah. Absolutely. So this Shellers is, like, recovering. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, if, if you want to switch over to Jack and just take it out in one shot. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, um... This, this guy is also going to have a Wingle and another Shellos. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to keep yourself, like, all good and healed up with Giga Drain. Keep myself afloat. Oh, goodness. By the way, don't you have a shiny stone? Yeah, I was saving it for right before Crash or Wake, actually. Got you. Okay, why? I don't know, for, for drama. Drivers. <laughs> <laughs> we're in a Nuzlocke, man! Yeah, but we were talking about gym leaders, and I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, goodness. You're the one who asked the question! Yeah, but I asked it before we were here and ready. Oh, goodness. Okay, then. Um... Uh, I want you to know I'm having a wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I take the piss. I, I really do. I really am enjoying myself here. Um, ah, nuts. Uh, what other types are there that we haven't discussed yet? Flying type. Oh, there you go. Flying type. Uh, hmm. Uh, Winona for me. Winona? Yep. I'm trying to remember who Winona is. Uh, Gen 3, she's got the, like, light purple hair in the aviator helmet. She runs Altaria. Oh, yeah, that's right. Her, her Altaria with Earthquake. Yeah, that's a whole thing. <laughs> you were dumb enough to bring an electric type against her. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Winona's definitely up there. Oh, no, you know what? I know who. Um, I forget her name. I'm trying to remember her name. But it was so out of left field. It was so just random. It like they had nothing building up to this. But her design, her idea, and the whole like concept is just so interesting to me that I could not help but fall in love with the uh, what's her name? Generation seven, Elite Four. Yeah. The 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 golf girl. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Kahili. Kahili. Yeah, Kahili, just like that random golfer type trainer who uses the flying type, and it's like, huh. That's pretty. You've never been in the. You were not in any part of the rest of the game. You have no. Like, you do not. Um. Like, you have no relation to these other trainers, and you just fucked up, dude. Yeah, I know. I was gonna go back anyway because I wanna go back to a Pokemon Center. And oh, Pokemon okay. Game. That actually does make sense now. But also, like, there's a button. I wanna press it. <laughs> I want to press the button. Okay, you should be able to go back now. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that... We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Alrighty then. But yeah, uh, I, I would have to say Kahili. Just because it's like... Oh, no, then you can go down that way. So that's why that button's there. So you can... Uh, oh, it's a return button. Is it? Apparently not. Crasher, screw your gym. Uh, next time we're gonna beat him up because his gym is stupid. Alright then. See you guys then. Oh, no, you got it. There we go. Jeez. You have a dumb gym. Anyway, Kahili, my favorite flying type specialist. Just because it's random, but it's cool. Great choice. Let's get, like, a Pokemon spinoff game that's just golf. It's just Mario Golf, but it's Pokemon. Um, what, are you golfing electrodes? Yeah, maybe. And when it goes into the hole, it explodes? Yeah, and sometimes, like... Sometimes, like, you think you're getting into a hole, but there's a dicklet down there. Oh, no, dude. knocks that out of the hole. Oh, no, you know what would be cool, actually? Um, Hisuian, um, Hisuian Voltorb is the ball. Yeah. And when he goes into the hole, fireworks. Nice. There you go. I think we just... Yeah, Game Freak, call us. Yeah. <laughs>